How is it going, my good friends? Today I am going to show you how to make this homemade deodorant for your hiking trips. So, how is this any different from bringing along a travel size deodorant? Well, firstly, look at it, it's tiny. You have the ability to bring along as much or as little as you need. And with that, you're going to save a slight amount of space and a slight amount of weight. So just for comparison, this little jar when full weighs about 10 grams, whereas this travel size deodorant weighs about 80 grams. So it's not much, but little things like this do add up. But the biggest benefit of all is that it is natural. And if you are here because you like hiking, I'm sure you can appreciate that in one way or another. Now, do you need deodorant while you are hiking? No. Is it a nice thing to have when you are out in the bush for multiple days on end without showering? Yeah. So let's see how to make it. So this is going to be a paste deodorant, meaning you put a little bit onto your finger and rub it into your arm. It is a very simple recipe, so you will need a third of a cup of coconut oil, a quarter of a cup of baking soda, also known as bicarb soda, a quarter of a cup of corn flour, also known as cornstarch or arrowroot powder, and the essential oil or oils of your choice. I use roughly about 20 drops. If you don't have any essential oils, you don't have to put any in. It just means it will be slightly coconut scented from the coconut oil. And you literally just have to mix all these ingredients together and you are done. This recipe will obviously make more than what can fit into your little jar. So I just keep the rest in the bathroom and fill up my little jar when needed. So the coconut oil is the base ingredient here. It has antibacterial properties and it's going to help act as a moisturizer. You can warm the coconut oil up in the microwave beforehand if you need, so it's a little bit softer to help you stir it in. The purpose of the corn flour is for that antiperspirant effect. If you've ever used corn flour in cooking, you'll be able to make that connection of how it absorbs moisture. Baking soda is a common ingredient in natural deodorants. Some people are a bit more sensitive to it than others, so if this is your first time making this, you could put slightly less in to see how it goes on your own skin. In terms of essential oils, they each have their own benefits depending on which ones you choose. Tea tree oil, for example, is antibacterial as well. So you can have fun reading up on the different benefits of different oils, or perhaps you just want to choose an oil based on the scent. Just make sure that whatever brand of oils you use, they are safe to apply topically, meaning they are safe to put onto your skin because there is a big difference between good quality essential oils. The brand that I use is doTERRA and the specific oil that I use is a blend they make called Hope, which is a combination of bergamot, ylang ylang, frankincense and vanilla. The little jar I have here is from a site called Lightsmith and it weighs about two grams but I'm sure you can use any container that you have lying around at home. I will say though that because coconut oil is the base ingredient here and coconut oil tends to respond to room temperature, so it means if you're hiking on a warm summer's day, your deodorant will become very soft, maybe even turn to liquid. So just make sure that your container is leak proof and vice versa. If you're hiking on a winter's day, your deodorant might become quite firm, which means you just have to warm it up with your finger first. If you end up making this for your own hiking trips, let me know in the comments section. As always, thank you for watching. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. And I will see you in the next one.